Hey guys, John Lechner here, Larry Stolzan Equipment, Springfield, Tennessee, soon to be Pleasant View, Tennessee. I'm standing here in what's going to be our new showroom at the Pleasant View location. As you can see, you know, work's coming along nicely. And we decided we want to do another Tech Talk segment. I know we've kind of slacked off on it a little bit. I sincerely apologize about that. Things have been kind of crazy. I hope everybody's staying safe. But we get a lot of questions on the regen process on these tractors. So if you have a CK3510 or above, that this is going to apply to you. So we're going to go through a couple things and show you a couple of ins and outs of what you know, the process is going to look like and what it's going to take to maintain your system. Uh, I've got Thomas Reynolds here with me, so let me go grab him real quick and let's get into this. Hey folks, uh, Thomas Reynolds here again, and uh, we're just going to go through with a quick tech talk. And today I just wanted to give a brief explanation on um, what a DPF regeneration is, how to know when your tractor is doing it, what to do when your tractor is doing it, and as well as go over the, uh, the various indicators here. So uh, there's a couple different types of uh, regeneration. You have a passive regen, which is ideal, and that's where the, uh, the operating conditions that the tractor is experiencing are sufficient to create enough heat and keep the DPF clean, uh, burn out the particulate matter that it is there to capture per government mandate. Um, that is ideal in a perfect world. It would do that every time, all the time, and we would never need the other three. But uh, we don't live in a perfect world, so what ends up happening is eventually the DPF will get clogged to a point, um, with particulate matter of course, uh, where the tractor needs to manipulate its, um, its fueling parameters and such to generate enough uh, sufficient heat to burn out the DPF and burn out all the carbon particulate matter that's uh, trapped there within. When that's happening, uh, you'll see this light come on, on your dash. It's uh, in the partition with your right hand blinker on your dash and uh, it'll be along with this one. But this is, if this comes on with the little uh, thermometer there, that means that a regen is underway. Um, when a regen is underway, you can, you can continue operating your tractor uh, at perfectly normal, but keep the engine RPMs above 1500 and uh, don't shut the tractor off until, or let the engine RPMs drop below 1500 until this light is no longer illuminated. And that's just going to allow the tractor to go through its regen process. If you see this light on, um, don't, if you can, avoid shutting off your tractor, avoid shutting it down, avoid pressing the um, regen inhibit switch, which we'll go over here shortly. Uh, allowing your tractor to do its thing while this is on is going to keep you from having to go through all this stuff down here, at least for a considerable amount more time. Uh, when you get, so these two things, these two are about where we want to be. And that's where you're normally going to be. But uh, as your tractor gets more age, uh, depending on how it's used, things of that nature, uh, you're gonna start getting, you're gonna have this little guy pop up. And this is a regen warning lamp. And there's three stages to this. The first stage pretty much serves as a reminder. This is just going to be, this light is going to be illuminated on the dash and solid. And all it's telling you is, hey, you need to stop, uh, stop what you're doing your nearest convenience. Uh, put your tractor if you're put your tractor in neutral, neutral range, engage the parking brake, and uh, let it sit there for a couple seconds to figure out what it's doing. Press your regen button and hold it down for two seconds, two to three. Everyone's counts a little different. Uh, once you do that, tractor's gonna take its time, approximately 30 to 40 minutes, and it's gonna go through a regen. The uh, RPMs are going to fluctuate. You're going to notice a slight change in engine noise uh, as it's manipulating the fuel parameters to create that heat. You may notice uh, some of you with a good ear will hear a fuel knock. It's perfectly normal. You may even see a little bit of smoke. The tractor's just doing what it's intended to do. Um, but let's say you didn't see it. It's real bright out. You couldn't see the dash that well, or um, you just procrastinated and put it off. Eventually this light is going to turn into this and it's going to be the same light, but instead of solid, it's going to be flashing. 
And what happens here is it's telling you, hey, still need to do a regen, but now I'm really going to remind you and we're going to derate the engine, cap it at 2200 RPMs. It's my chicken scratch there. At this point, you need to pretty much do the same thing. You still have the option to do what you're supposed to do here. You, still, you can still make it right. All you have to do is put it, park it somewhere, do your regen, go inside, cool down a little bit, have a beer, whatever you want to do, and uh, everything will be fine. But uh, the more you know, you start to get into this this realm here. That's um, the more you start to get soot build up that you know a normal regen might not be able to clear out but let's say uh let's say you get past that so we're at this point we're at all these three let's say you get past that let's say you, for some reason just didn't get done you loaned the tractor to a friend he didn't know any of this stuff or didn't care and now you're at this point you have your regen warning light flashing your tractor has now eliminated illuminated a check engine light and at this point uh, this is the stage three warning at this point, you have an even harder, you have a harsher D rate, and the tractor is going to have to be uh, brought in for um, either a possible DPF replacement, or we're going to have to just force it through a regen and evaluate the uh, the sip mass index and such of the DPF. And something also important to uh, to note is when the regen warning light is on, the tractor will not do. A passive or active regen. It's not going to do one on its own. So uh, if this is on, don't wait for the tractor to do anything on its own. It's telling you that you have to do a regen now. Um, once you so once you get to this point right here, just uh, you'd be saving yourself a lot of trouble, a lot of headache, just to go ahead and stop do a stationary regen as they're sometimes called before it gets into this realm right here as far as a regen inhibit switch goes we talked about that a little bit it's just a little rocker switch on your dash there now you'll be uh, momentary contact one way momentary contact down and pretty much it's just going to have like this little symbol here and uh, but it'll have like the you know the don't smoke don't carry your gun here sign or and then the upwards, upwards, it's going to be pretty much the same thing. Press it up and hold for two seconds to do a, to perform a regen. If you're in the middle of this right here, say this is on, and for some reason you can't, you can't either, you can't have uh, really high EGTs coming out of the exhaust. You're parked on a massive pile of dry leaves. Uh, or you know the neighborhood kids just threw gas on you and water balloons for some reason um, that's a good time to hit the inhibit switch not just because you feel like going inside if um, if this is on under emergencies you can stop it by just hitting the inhibit side of this rocker switch when this is on save yourself a lot of trouble by just pressing this part of the rocker switch holding it for two or three seconds letting the tractor take care of itself we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and uh, actually take you outside and show you what this all looks like on the tractor. So we're out here with this CK3510. This may not be the uh, the exact tractor you have, so things may look a little different, but the process is the same. So with this tractor being a gear drive, we're gonna go ahead and try to do a manual regen. What we need to do: is make sure our parking brake is set. Come over here to our range range selection. Make sure we're in neutral. It doesn't hurt to be in not a bad idea to check your notes, make sure you're in a neutral position there as well. And while we're here, everything is set to a neutral, the tractor is warmed up, we're going to go ahead and see if this one needs to do one. So what you'll do is you'll come to this regen switch, or the regen and blocker switch, but we're talking about earlier. Press and hold for about two seconds. And as you'll see, the tractor has kicked itself into regen. So 
it may be a little loud outside uh, with that regen in process. You may not have been able to hear me over the engine. But uh, essentially all we did is we allowed the tractor to warm up, uh, made sure we had the park and brake engaged, the clutch was not engaged, made sure the range was in neutral. Not a bad idea to pull out of gear as well. Make sure your shuttle's in neutral. And of course, with a hydrostat tractor or, or a hydrostat tractor or a true gear drive as opposed to a shuttle shift, there are gonna be slight differences. You're just gonna make pretty much, primarily just make sure your range is in neutral and your uh, parking brake is engaged. And then uh, you're just gonna press and hold that top button, the top portion of that rocker switch, like we talked about, for about two to three seconds. And then as you saw outside with that tractor, this light is going to illuminate and the tractor is going to start manipulating its own idle. So it's going to, uh, in that case, it jumped pretty much straight to 2600 RPMs. And uh, it's gonna do that for a little while. It'll drop down to a lower RPM and then it may increase. And all it's doing right there is just, it's keeping track of the temperature within the DPF and it's uh, keeping it in a state where it can burn all that particular matter out. But like I said outside, once you've done this part, your light comes on, your RPM begins to raise. As long as you've got the tractor in a safe location to perform a regen, all you have to do is uh, give it time to complete its regen. And uh, if nothing else, just for safety purposes, keep a line of sight on the tractor. Uh, the exhaust gases coming out are going to be in the range of 1,000 degrees Fahrenheit, so it's not a bad idea. Uh, just to make sure that you don't have anything around that exhaust that's going to burn or melt. I mean, you don't pack, park it near your uh, bass boat, anything like that. So. But uh, that pretty much wraps it up. All right, guys, so that's the regen process. If you have any other questions, need any other clarification, please don't hesitate to ask. You can give us a call, shoot us an email, or leave a comment down in the comment section. But I do need your help. I need topics for future Tech Talk segments. So anything you guys have, any kind of problems you guys come up with, anything that you need, leave it down in the comments. Here's my email address. Um, send me some topics that we can cover. Uh, we're here to help. We want to do everything we can to keep you guys on, on the right track and keep your tractors up and running and working hard. So until next time, keep your RPMs up, keep them tractors dirty.